Have you ever wondered how it feels to take a six hour transcontinental flight on the Indian low cost airline Indigo? Well, probably not. Yet in this video, I'm going to answer this question anyway. So sit back, relax and get ready for an unexpected aviation adventure from the East African country of Kenya all the way up to India. From ridiculous online check-in procedures and a unique onboard service to an Indian immigration officer causing troubles. In this trip report, I will cover it all. If you have the attention span of a goldfish and want to skip right to the flight, skip, skip. do so now. Timestamps are provided. Today's journey starts in the capital of Kenya, Nairobi. If you are from the US, you're probably confused right now. What? There are other countries besides America, Paris and Disneyland? Yep, and one of them is Kenya. Kenya is a country in Africa and, by the way, Africa is a continent, not a country, baby, get it right. In Kenya, you can do all sorts of things. One of those is going to a safari where you will see those savanna puppies, these ridiculously tall things here, striped donkeys, big cats and food for big cats. But jokes aside, Kenya is freaking amazing and honestly one of the greatest countries I have ever been. The people are extremely kind, the country is full of culture and obviously the wildlife is probably the best in the world. The only time we felt unsafe is when a gas factory or some like that just exploded less than a kilometer from our apartment. First I thought the third world war has just started or something. Another thing I struggled with was to find a barber. My beard is holy to me and I was in dire need for a haircut. So where to go? In which country do the best barbers live? Well, probably Turkey, or Turkey as we have to say now. But I have just been to Turkey for like the 10th time or so. So where do the second best barbers live? Well, according to some article from 2009, it is India. So let's go to India. If you have been subscribed to this channel for some time now, you probably know I won't fly there on a private jet. Instead, let's take a flight that cost me 270 USD for two person. The airline Indigo. I flew on Indigo back in January 2023 from Delhi to Bangkok. However, back then I wasn't embarrassing myself publicly on the internet as a wannabe YouTuber. So now, one year later, let's add Indigo to my portfolio of airlines I have tried on this channel. Also referred to its IATA code 6E, Indigo is not only India's largest airline by passenger volume, but also Asia's largest individual airline and one of the largest in the world. Which is surprising considering I heard about them for the first time about a year ago when booking a flight with them. Managed by the former KLM CEO Peter Elbers, Indigo is still expanding rapidly, currently operating 2000 daily flights to 86 destinations in India and 33 abroad. We cover the various processes, one goes fast to become a pilot. My plan is that I will be pilot and I will help everyone. Pilot. As we arrive at the airport, the first thing we do is to check in. Now you may ask, Johnny, are you serious? Why didn't you check in online? And also your videos suck. To that I say, I would have checked in if it had worked and well, if you don't like them, just don't watch my videos then. When trying to check in online, I initially wanted to add seats and in-flight meals. My attempt to pay, however, failed. To buy in-flight services, Indigo requires you to have an Indian credit card. For one of the biggest airlines in the world who is about to become a market leader in international flights transiting in India, this is just an indie no-go. <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, with that basically you're excluding every non-Indian passenger from purchasing in-flight services. So yeah, I gave up and had to restart the whole check-in process again. After entering our passport and visa details for about three times in a row, we finally were about to confirm just to get a notice that online check-in is currently not available for international flights. Like why the hell would you enable the whole S check-in process for this flight if it's not even available? But okay, no big deal. So we wake up a bit earlier to check-in at the counter. To be fair, there was absolutely no queue and also the check-in staff were super friendly. A huge benefit of Indigo is that on flights from and to Nairobi you get 25 kg of checked-in baggage for free. 
Just for comparison, in Europe, even on many full service carriers, you don't get any free baggage on the basic economy fare. So big props to Indigo for that. Before we squeeze into the cramped seats of Indigo for 6 hours, we make a short detour to the Turkish Airlines Business Class Lounge. Indigo does not offer a business class, however you can purchase lounge access through the website, if you have an Indian credit card. I get access to the TK Lounge thanks to my priority pass, but since Indigo and Turkish Airlines actually have a strong partnership going on, I assume that you will get access to this lounge. I can't confirm that however, because if you want to check it on their website, well, yeah. In my opinion, except for some of the domestic lounges in Turkey, the lounges of Turkish Airlines are excellent. You get fresh hot food, the staff is usually friendly and in Nairobi there is even a nice view of the tarmac. As we are walking to our gate, our flight 6E1854 is still on time. However, that will change a bit since there is some sort of technical problems. I enjoyed my first glimpse of the A320neo that will take us to Mumbai today and let time pass. Waiting at Nairobi airport isn't too bad actually, since in addition to lounges, restaurants and many shops, there are plenty of seating options and also power sockets to charge your devices. Boarding finally starts with some delay and I can't wait to get on board our one and a half year old ride. My first impression is actually quite favorable, especially considering the low price we paid. The crew appears to be professional and well-mannered, and also the cabin and the seats are absolutely worth the fare. But let me provide you with a comprehensive seat tour after we have left Kenya behind. I somehow started my journey with Indigo on the wrong foot. Nonetheless, I feel like from now on it can only get better. We are first year specialist globe charters, homemakers, mothers and bond leaders, so please settle in while we make a journey safe and comfortable. As a travel companion, it's simply wonderful to bring you closer to our rich drivers, Indiana and Indigo, carrying fairness to your demo position. और नाक को मुंह ढक कर सांस लेते रहें। दूसरों की सहायता करने से पहले अपना मास्क सही तरीके से पहन लें। इस विमान में आठ आपातकालीन द्वार हैं, दो सामने, दो पीछे और चार विंग्स के ऊपर। फर्श पर लगी प्रकाश मान पट्टियाँ। Cover your nose and mouth and breathe normally. Ensure your mask is secured before helping others. There are eight emergency exits of this air. Regulatory action, a safety information card and a communication guide. a closer look at my seat. The first thing I notice is the excellent legroom. I did not remember Indigo having such a massive legroom, quite the opposite actually. However, I think it may have to do with us being seated in the fifth row. Apart from some very minor food stains on the ceiling, the cabin is spotless. That is obviously to be expected on such a young plane, but it is nevertheless a more comfortable feeling than spending six hours in a filthy cabin. On the seat in front of us, we have a foldable tray table that's both functional and clean. 
beneath it, you will find a seat pocket with an in-flight magazine called Hello 6E. I'll have a closer look at it later. Additionally, there's a plastic sleeve with a vomit bag and a safety card in it, from which someone has already taken a bite. Also, it's quite nice that the seats are reclinable, which is not possible on most budget airlines I have flown with so far. But now, let's have a look at the crew and the onboard service. On Indigo, there are no complimentary meals. Unfortunately, the tasty looking meals you can pre-order are not available on the onboard menu. Instead, the only hot options available are some processed instant food containing plenty of chemicals and trans fats. Not to be confused with fat trans. So if you want to eat fresh hot food on Indigo, make sure to move to India first, get an Aadhaar card and apply for an Indian Master card. Despite not having paid for an in-flight catering, about 30 to 40 minutes after takeoff, we get served a complimentary cup of water. When serving the water, I'm honestly quite amazed that a flight attendant calls the passengers by their name. Obviously they have memorized the names and where the passengers sit. Which is some serious business class stuff right there. And please remember, I'm talking about a 6 hour flight that costs less than 150 bucks per person. Like, can you imagine the cabin crew greeting you by name on Ryanair, Spirit Airlines or Wizz Air? As hunger starts to set in, we nevertheless find ourselves craving instant noodles. I made my way to the galley, hoping to snag a quick bite. One of the two flight attendants there asked me if I have Indian currency or credit card. I admit I'm without a local cash, but have an international credit card on hand. Then the other attendant, who also knows my name, shares her insight into the lengthy journey I'm facing, including a night's layover in Mumbai. She can tell I'm probably starving and then goes on explaining that they have some extra crew meals they'd be happy to share at no charge. At that point, I'm really taken aback by the gesture. The idea of eating away the crew's food makes me hesitate, but her insistence wins me over. This, I realize, must be Indian hospitality in its purest form, something unimaginable on a European flight. Later, the flight attendant even came to our seats to bring us some juice, have some small talk and even speaking some words in Thai language with pottery. This just once more shows how much of a difference the crew can make. I mean, things were not really optimal at the beginning of the flight, but the crew really made a huge difference on what I think about Indigo. For the next few hours we try to sleep, which isn't so easy due to the guy behind us absolutely killing it with his snore. So instead, I decide to have a quick look in the onboard magazine Hello 6E, which, next to the menu and the root network of Indigo, features some travel inspiration and insights into the way Indigo Air operates. One thing I am missing is Wi-Fi or a power outlet. However, for the low fares that's not really something you can expect. Yet, something you should expect even on a budget airline is a clean restroom. Here, I would give Indigo probably a 6 or a 7 out of a 10 for the cleanliness and also due to the functionality since there was no soap. But to be fair, the restroom was used a lot on the flight and the crew checked it once in a while. And also, I have seen way worse than that on flights that cost a lot more. Returning to my seat, we dive into a film I have preloaded on my iPad before takeoff. Surprisingly, our journey later takes an unexpected turn when the crew begins distributing handwritten letters to us and the surrounding passengers. The reason behind this gesture remains a mystery to me. However, they ask to take photos of us and other passengers, each holding their personal letter. This leaves me wondering if that is the case on all long flights on Indigo or if there was something uniquely special about our journey. But again, I notice how well-mannered, professional and friendly the crew is. This time it's another attendant, but she also stays by our side for quite some time, immersing in some small talk, which doesn't really happen that often in economy class. Probably there was just more time on this flight for the crew to dedicate themselves to a great service, but still. I have never experienced service like that on a budget airline, and I also did not expect it. I have been criticized under some of my videos for stating that I am uncomfortable when staff is overly friendly and I can understand how people are confused about this. But for that you have to understand that I am not really used to that and I really think that this is a cultural thing. I am from Switzerland and Swiss people really suck at small talk. We are quite straightforward and the service mentality represents that. 
It does not mean that we are unfriendly, but it is just very different to this overly friendly behavior you get, for example, in Canada, which seems kind of fake and superficial to me, to be honest. But on this flight, it was somehow different. The interactions and the treatment by the crew felt really genuine, and I can't say thank you enough to the crew for making our experience with Indigo great. Something that ruined the day for us, that isn't the fault of Indigo, however, will be the immigration experience. But let's see for yourself. If you want to skip the landing in Mumbai, feel free to do so now. We've arrived in Mumbai safely and we'll have an overnight layover here before continuing our journey to Delhi. I was super excited to check out Mumbai for the first time in my life. But by the time we made it out of the airport, it was too late for that already. The reason? A simple mistake. After waiting for some time in queue, we presented ourselves to the immigration officer with our documents. First, everything went fine and we were allowed entry into India. However, as we tried to buy a SIM card at the airport and therefore had to show our passport, the airtel guy noticed that the entry stamp in Pachari's passport showed January 2023 instead of January 2024. With a maximum duration of stay of 30 days, this meant that technically she had overstayed her visa for 11 months. First I thought that this must be the old entry stamp from last year when we visited India, but turns out it was actually the new one. So they were unable to issue a SIM card and we also worried that we will not be able to check into our hotel since usually they check the entry stamp. It was a simple mistake by the officer and it happens to all of us that at the beginning of the new year we still write a previous one. However, what followed was quite an ordeal. She had to go back to the immigration to get it corrected and was sent to different places. Nobody was responsible and the immigration officer from before was nowhere to be seen. I was not allowed to go back inside and the whole thing took ages. Finally, someone was able to help, however, we had to check first if she actually entered just now or if she overstayed, which took ridiculously long. Finally, she was interviewed in a separate chamber and about three hours after landing, we were finally free to go. But what are my final thoughts on Indigo? Well, is Indigo perfect? No, there are some issues. But overall, the positive outweighs the negative by far and I will be happy to fly with them again. If you want great value for your money, this is the way to Indigo. <coughs> An airline I would avoid, however, is Ethiopian Airlines. Check right here to watch the video. Thanks for joining in today and see you next week. As a travel companion, it's simply wonderful to bring you closer to our rich, diverse India, Indigo, coming to tennis to your demo position.